it's time for another second breaking update on the the patrick the fatrick universe um i have found this this twitter account this is perhaps the most juvenile and insane thing i've ever seen um i want to share it with you it's called farty tits tomlinson fart on pat's tits now this is a picture of patrick s tomlinson uh with some breast enhancements done and then he photoshops in a cartoon of a man farting on patrick tomlinson's tits and this is his entire Twitter account. He does this um, every couple of days. And yes, Patrick responds to this saying, No, child, you do not fart on my tits. Enjoy prison. I do not have tits, probably. He also throws that in. You do not fart on my tits, and I have no tits to fart on. Enjoy prison, stalker. You are mentally ill. This was going to be my entire Patrick S. Tomlinson discussion for this stream i had pulled this up and i thought this is so stupid i will show this on stream and laugh at it and then we will move on from patrick tomlinson that'll be the joke uh patrick tomlinson has a a pest account called farty tits tomlinson haha <laughs> isn't that silly let's move on but just this day we have received an update on the patrick tomlinson universe patrick tomlinson and nikki robinson uh his partner or living partner has sued the city of Milwaukee and um, Milwaukee police officer Lyndon Evans for civil rights violations. 42 USC subsection 1983, the Civil Rights Act, means that he has been systematically deprived of his civil rights and he is suing for it. Right, actually, let's pull this up. I kind of want to read this and just show you what it says because it's a very vague um, law and... Uh, it has its own sort of metaverse of litigation and legal history um, because it is such a peculiar law. I will read this. Assuming that my computer wants to load it because I am stretching my bandwidth as far as it will go. 42 USC 1983 Civil Action for Deprivation of Rights. Quote, every person who, under any color of statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory and the District of Columbia subjects or, or causes to be subjected any citizen of the United States or other person with the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in the action of law, suit, or equity or other proper proceedings for redress, except that in any action brought against a judicial officer for an act or omission taken in such officer's judicial capacity, injunctive relief shall not be granted unless a declaratory decree was violated or a declaratory relief was unavailable for the purposes of the section. Any act of Congress applicable exclusively to the District of Columbia shall be considered to be a statute of the District of Columbia. Woo. <laughs> now you can see how some people have made an entire career uh, litigating this law because that is a fucking mouthful. That is one sentence, I think. Um, we'll not break this down word by word because, to be quite honest, I would be in over my head. However, the gist is if any government um, or any officer of the law somehow deprives you of your constitutional liberties, you can sue them for it. The only people you cannot sue for this are judges. Any member of the judiciary, which means judges, uh, if they rule against you, um, they cannot be, even if it's a violation of your civil rights, even if they're so completely and totally wrong that they actually deprive you of your civil liberties, you cannot sue them for their bad judgment. Um, judicial immunity is a very, very well-established thing in the United States. A judge can never be held uh, liable for his judgments, no matter how awful they are. Um, unless he's accepting money, there is there's crimes that the judge can commit. But in general, if he just makes a very bad decision, um, even if it really fucks up your life, even if it deprives you of liberty, even if it sends you to jail for no reason whatsoever, um, he is in his right to do so. And the reason for that is that judges um, can't feel pressure to make certain decisions. So judges in the capacity of their, their role enjoy intense uh, blanket immunity to basically everything. However, not immune to such a deprivation of rights lawsuit is the city of milwaukee an officer uh what's his name it, L evans oh no i think uh, this guy's black so there's no chance he's related to rich evans however that is a genuine possibility if he was white maybe he was i don't know maybe rich evans does have a black a black um relative or like a step step brother or some shit we'll never know it is milwaukee it could happen 
AIDS. Oh no, that's racist in this context, chat. You can't say that. You can't say AIDS. Ask Harden to interpret that. Well, I don't know if I want to say, I don't know. I can't bug my my lawyer. However, I do have a lawyer that looked into this, and this is what he had to say in regards to the lawsuit. I will not read all of this. There are some highlights that I'll read. Um, but it is 17 pages, and there are some highlights. But this is, uh, I had a lawyer look over this. And this is what, a lawyer who happened to have experience in this particular subsection, uh, and this is what he had to say. It is a very poorly written complaint, such that I wonder if these lawyers have any idea of what they're doing, or if the real goal is just to get a Milwaukee, or just to get Milwaukee, the city of Milwaukee, to come to the table and hug it out. They barely made a feint at Monell liability cited in the case, but pled no facts, which is a massive problem. And even as to the pleaded facts, there are precious few. It's a conclusion from a pattern, but they didn't really explain the pattern except to say that there is one and cite a couple of examples. Also, apparently, William Grau's dad is a circuit judge in the neighboring county, Wausau. So maybe that's their hope, that through some family ties and a lawsuit, they can get it all to stop. Uh, so... Uh, that is a lawyerly take on uh, Patrick's filings. I will not go over all of them because, honestly, I have nothing to contribute. But there are some funny things, apparently. Something awful um, cut out some some gems. Let's read it. Uh, Nikki Robinson and Patrick Tomlinson are the targets of a vicious campaign of domestic terrorism car carried out at the hands of a group of bullies who hide behind the anonymity of the lowercase i internet which one it doesn't specify i guess we'll never know the bully's main weapon of choice is something called a swatting which is when someone who wants to endanger the life and safety of another calls 911 and lies to provoke a dangerous police response to the victim's house uh, but time and time again the milwaukee police have ignored reality resulting in multiple illegal searches of nikki and patrick's home and illegal seizures of their persons the insanity has drawn local, national, and international media attention. It goes on to then name Sergeant Lyndon Evans. He says, the worst offender is Sergeant Lyndon Evans. On three occasions, Sergeant Evans responded to the swatting call with his abuse and violence. Sergeant Evans told Nikki and Patrick that he was well aware of the situation, but still demanded to be let inside their home, going so far as to threaten to break down the front door if he was not allowed inside. Nikki and Patrick live in a constant state of fear, worried that the next encounter they have with the police will be their last. Every knock at the door or police car that drives by leaves them terrified. Uh, this is con uh, contradicted with a very recent tweet made by Patrick Tomlinson, which says, <clears throat> My life has never been better, stalker, while yours is already over. This is why. Enjoy prison. Uh, and apparently, uh, there is a contradiction. The con obviously the contradiction is that every knock at the door uh, leaves them terrified. But he's also never been better. <laughs> this is what I, I mean. I mean, if we're going to legal lawyer, your, lawyer, your, lol, your speak this, it's not technically a contradiction. It could be simultaneously true that Patrick Tomlinson lives in a constant state of fear and anxiety. And this is the high point of his entire life. He's never been better. So if you really want to really want to go at that, there are ways around saying that he's a hypocrite. <laughs> um, this lawsuit seeks to end the madness and vindicate the violation of plaintiff's constitutional rights. To, it seeks to effect change through punitive damages by punishing the defendants for their egregious conduct with the hope that punishment is significant enough to prevent this from happening again in the future. So I will say that there is probably an argument to be made that being swatted and having police visits to your home over and over again for the same bullshit might call for some relief. Um, but there's also a very strong argument to make that police are obligated to conduct a thorough review to see if when someone calls something in that someone's suicidal or has someone kidnapped that that's not untrue because um you know if they're if patrick tomlinson did suddenly decide to start making pepperoni 
in his basement out of black children. And the police decided, oh, my God, I've heard this before. <laughs> and he was just allowed to do this. He was allowed to become another Milwaukee serial killer grinding up black people. Uh, that would be that would look really I mean, especially in Milwaukee because of their history with Dahmer and stuff. You can't just take shit like that. Not seriously, I guess, because if you remember. Milwaukee has been sued repeatedly because there were instances where people did tell the police that Jeffrey Dahmer was doing things and they didn't take it seriously because they just went, well, oh, this sounds like some fag shit. This sounds like some fag shit that they would do. And then that uh, they didn't investigate. And as a result, a lot more people died than would have if they had taken it seriously. So, I mean, the, the, they do have obligations and they do have a history of needing to oblige stuff like that. Um, so he might have a case. However, I'm, I would, I would love, I would love, love, love to see the argument made by the city of Milwaukee that the only reason why people keep doing this and calling these in number one, to say that they have a, a, an obligation to ensure the well being of people and they have to take all complaints like that seriously. I would love to see that argument made and then followed up by saying the reason why people keep calling in this bullshit is that Patrick Tomlinson keeps spurging about it. He goes on Twitter and gives these people trolling him all this attention. Like that is a legal argument. He brings it upon himself. He puts out all this negative attention to a worldwide audience and brings all this bad publicity on himself by being a retard continually. And that's why people keep doing it. And it would stop if he just fucking stopped. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I would be, I would love, I would love to see that argued in court. That would be really, 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 really funny. Uh, chances are though they will probably just settle because <laughs> that's cheaper um, than than litigating something all the way. Um, and that's the update on Patrick. He is suing the city of Milwaukee, home to the ugliest flag in the United States. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.